the next video in our series on legal research. This video will review the basic steps for conducting book research in secondary materials and statutes. In another video, we will discuss the steps involved when doing book research for case law. Whether you are doing your research in the books or electronically, you need to do a few preliminary steps. First, you need to determine the scope of your research project. In other words, what issues do you need to search? That's the question you need, you need to ask. The step also includes determining the controlling jurisdiction of your problem. And hopefully by now you get the idea that jurisdiction is very important. Second, you need to generate your search terms. And third, determine which sources you will use to begin your research. Now, the key to book research is knowing how to use an index. And there are four main steps you need to go through for book research. First, look up your key terms in the index. So that means first you have to know what your search terms are by generating search terms. And the index will point you to specific sections to read. Second, you need to actually read the text. And third, you need to make sure that you are getting the most current information. You do this by the process of updating. Many hardcover publishers update their volumes by placing a thin paperback in the back of the volumes. These updates are called pocket parts. To update, simply look in the pocket part for the section that you are reading and see if there is any new material. Additionally, if the pocket part gets too large, publishers may publish a supplement, which is a soft cover book placed next to the hardcover volume. Updating your research is critically important to all research assignments. Fourth, when you are using a secondary source, you must remember that you are not reading the law. Consequently, you must never rely on a secondary source's statement of a case or a statute. You need to read those authorities for yourself. So think of a secondary source as your roadmap to help you navigate the primary law. It is a trail or a map to follow, but it is not the destination. Next, let's explore the index method further. Virtually all secondary resources and statutes will have an index that will accompany the resource. For large resources, such as the ALR, Amjur, CJS, and even statutes, an index will cover multiple volumes and typically you will find the index volumes placed at the end of the actual volumes on the shelf as you see in these pictures here there are multiple index volumes for ALR uh, CJS and even um, the United States Code Service which is a um, statutory volume of the US Code the index method simply requires you to look up your search terms in the index to see if those terms are covered in that resource. If they are, the index will point you to the specific section to read. If your search terms are not in the index, then you will need to rethink your search terms. This is what a typical index entry looks like. When the index points you to a specific section, your next step is to simply find that section and read it. You should also look over the table of contents for the section that the index pointed you to because the table of contents may point you to additional relevant sections. So let's have a quick example. If you're researching a prior relationship that a spouse had, this resource tells you to look at the volume marriage and consult section 52. So you will want to go to the stacks, find the volume that covers the topic marriage, open up marriage, and look for section 52. And that section will then discuss your topic. 
Reading the section, though, is not enough. You must always remember to update the law. To update the law, find the supplement with the recent updates. Many times the supplement is placed in the back of the book, as you see here, and this is called a pocket part. Also look to see if there is a soft cover volume next to the hard cover volume, and the publisher will do that if the pocket part gets too large. A final note. When using the index method, you will likely discover that your terms are not in the index. When that happens, don't get frustrated or feel that you're a failure um, or break any pencils or the keyboard. Rather, all that means is that you use terms that are not in the index. So think of alternative terms. That's all there is to it. It is common that you will have to try different terms until you, until you find the one that works. So with a little patience and perseverance, you can succeed at book research. This concludes our video on the overview of book research. Remember to take the quiz on Blackboard.